Hello and welcome to this recorded tutorial session on interferometric SAR. In this tutorial session, we'll be looking at the case study of Mount Etna and we'll be investigating an eruption which took place between the 24th and the 27th of December 2018 and uh, we'll be attempting to recreate the analysis done in this paper which was published in the Geophysical Research Letters and specifically we'll be looking at uh, the uh, SAR acquisitions uh, made from the descending path um, so we'll be trying to regenerate the interferogram that you see here in the top left uh, top right hand corner uh, as well as the uh, displacement uh, estimation that you can see uh, beneath it so uh, Mount Etna is um, uh, the largest active onshore volcano in Europe. Uh, it has a height of approximately 3,320 meters, and the volcanic activity there is uh, presently characterized by summit eruptions from the five craters and by fissural eruptions, which are mainly clustered along three rift zones, which extend from the summit towards the northeast, the south, and the west respectively. So the first step that we need to do is to download the uh, SAR data, the single look complex um, acquisitions from the two different dates. And uh, we'll be looking at the date of the uh, 22nd of December and the uh, second date will be that uh, of the 28th of December. So to do that, we visit uh, the sci-hub.copernicus.eu website and we click on open hub um, and this will take us to the Copernicus open access hub from which we can uh, freely download the data. Um, you may need to log in by clicking on uh, this icon here at the uh, top right hand corner and once you've logged in you can visit, uh, you can zoom in to the area of interest which is the eastern um, coast of Sicily. Um, so Mount Etna is uh, somewhere over here and you can um, create um, a selection area by right clicking on the map and um, if you right click again you will create the corners of the selection and we will create um, a square uh, rectangular type selection and to close the uh, the box, we just uh, double click, double right click on the, the map again. Then uh, we can go to the uh, search um, criteria where we can um, input the uh, starting and the ending date for the um, uh, to be able to find the acquisition that we want. Um, so we go to December of 2018 and um, we select uh, 21st December here because we want um, to start from the 21st and end at the 23rd so that we, ha we can have the um, acquisition of the 22nd of December in between. So once that is done we can then select Sentinel-1 as product type, we select SLC for single look complex and the sensor mode should be IW um, to indicate that uh, we want the interferometric white swath. Once that is done, then we can um, click here for search and um, after some time we will uh, be presented with the results of our query. So these are the results that we obtained as a result of our query and uh, we can see that there are seven products and um, uh, different overlapping acquisitions with our selected area and uh, we want to select um, the, um, the acquisition which has the best overlap which is uh, this one. Uh, we can see that it has been uh, highlighted in red and uh, we can also see it in this list here which is indicated 
uh, by the check mark which has now been um, selected and um, we see that this is an acquisition from the Sentinel um, S1B satellite and we can also view the product details by clicking on this icon and if we go to the product information we can see that um, this is from uh, descending uh, pass uh, which is what we we want and also the date is um, uh, what uh, we want which is essentially from uh, this is an acquisition from the 22nd of December so once uh, we've found our first acquisition we download the acquisition by clicking on this icon over here it's also possible to do it directly from the um, uh, the list of, of queried products and we wait then for the file to download um, and then we can move on to um, uh, acquiring and downloading the next acquisition so to do that we now can close this window we can um, go to the um, search functionality and instead change the search dates now from to start from the 27th of December and to go up to the uh, 29th of December 2018 uh, we leave everything else as it is and we click on search and we are presented now with um, a new set of uh, products for uh, this um, uh, new date that, that we have selected and um, we select this time the um, the overlapping tile uh, which is um, this one so in this case this is from the Sentinel um, S1A satellite and um, we uh, we can view the um, product information and if we scroll down and we click on product we can see that uh, this is also from uh, the sending part and it overlaps our area of, of interest um, so we can click on download as well note that this time we have um, not being able to download the product directly uh, because um, it is um, stored in the long-term archiving um, so therefore we have to wait uh, perhaps half an hour or an hour or so um, uh, until uh, we can actually download the product from the, the, the cart uh, you may also have seen this message also when trying to download the previous um, acquisition So in order to see what uh, we have in, in our cart, we can click on this icon at the top um, right hand corner and go to cart and uh, we'll, we'll see all the uh, products that we ever requested and which were um, placed in our cart and once um, the acquisition that we're interested in is available, we'll see that uh, we can um, download it uh, from over here and uh, it will no longer be offline anymore so we can um, uh, directly start uh, downloading it so after downloading the two SAR acquisitions we can now open them in the snap application so to do that we open the two products which you'll find located um, in the location where you would have uh, downloaded uh, the two products and um, to open them we click on each of um, the two products in turn and we click on their manifest files and in doing so we will open the products in the product explorer so I'll do the same for the second product and if we increase the size of this window we'll see that we have 
the full name of each of the products. If we open each of the products, we see that they have a number of subfolders, and the main one that we'll be interested in is the bands folder. So here we can see a number of bands. Some of them are original bands like the I and the Q, uh, which are the complex values of each of the acquisitions, while others with this V over here um, are virtual bands which have been generated from these um, uh, original bands. So the virtual bands that we see here are all intensity bands and the intensity is essentially the amplitude of the uh, SAR acquisition uh, squared. We also see that we have a number of intensity bands and um, some of these are for um, different uh, subswats like uh, IW1, IW2 and IW3 and also there are a number of um, there are two polarizations, so we have both the VH and the VV polarization. So if we open, for instance, the VV polarization, um, we create the, the, the snap application will create uh, the image for us and it will open it in uh, this tab over here. Um, so this happens to correspond to subset one. We also see the different bursts, which are um, uh, delineated by these black um, lines and we can also see where this um, image appears on the world view so if we zoom in over here we see that um, these are the locations of the the two acquisitions um, we can what we can do is we can open the three um, uh, intensity bands for VV for the, the two, uh, for the, 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 the three uh, subswats. So we open IW2 and IW3. And then if we go to uh, window and tile horizontally, we'll, we'll be able to see um, each of these three acquisitions uh, side by side. Okay. Um, so the next step then is to start the INSAR processing um, now that we have these two acquisitions and to do that we'll be um, uh, doing that using a functionality in SNAP which is known as the Graph Builder. So we go to Tools and Graph Builder and um, we'll be creating um, uh, operators and connecting them to form a graph in order to achieve the desired product um, that we want. So the very first step will be to read in um, the two acquisitions and for now we'll delete the write operator and we'll add another read operator from so we right click add input output and we click on read and then what we want to do is to add a top star split operator which we do by going to add radar sentinel one tops and top star split and this operator will allow us to obtain um, 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 to, to, to be able to subdivide our um, uh, acqu our acquisition and extract only the bursts for instance which are closest to our area of interest we add a second top spar split operator from radar, sentinel one tops and top star split. And after doing that, we add um, an orbit file. So the apply orbit file operator, which we get from add radar apply orbit file. And we add a second one here. And what the apply, operate, apply orbit file does is it applies a precise orbit correction to our SAR data. And then the next step that we will um, do is to add um, a back geocoding operator. So you just enlarge this window, which will allow us to co-register the two SAR acquisitions. So we go to add radar co-registration. 
So radar core registration, Sentinel One tops core registration and back geocoding. And finally, we will write uh, this intermediate the result of this as an intermediate step in a new target folder. So we we'll go to uh, right click, add input output and write. So once we have all the operators set up, we can start connecting them together in order to form our graph. So we go to the end of the read operator, we see the red arrow, we click on it and drag it and connect it to the start of the top star split. Uh, we do the same for the bottom one here. And operator by operator, we can connect um, all of them together. Once the graph is set up, the next step is to uh, set the input parameters for each of the operators. So um, it's important to read in the um, uh, two products in the correct order because the we should start with the older date, which is uh, the 22nd of December 2018. And um, in the next read operator, we'll put uh, the later date, which is the 28th of December. So this means that the um, the first date will be the master and the second date will be the slave. So once that is done, um, uh, we can move on to the next step, which is the top star split, where we'll be selecting um, a particular number of bursts from uh, subswat. So we'll start off with subswat one. So it's already selected IW1. And uh, if we zoom in over here, we see the locations of the, the bursts um, around um, um, Sicily um, in, in our acquisition. And uh, for this um, subswat, we should select bursts such that they overlap with our area of interest, which is uh, Mount Etna. So in this case, we'll be selecting um, subswats from um, uh, three to six, so that it ov it overlaps um, with the area of interest, as you can see here. And for the next star acquisition, so VV is the polarization that we'll be using. And for the next star acquisition, if we zoom in, uh, we see that we have to select instead um, the bursts from one to four so we drag uh, these uh, arrows here until we get uh, bursts from one to four selected so we'll be essentially eventually we're going to be merging subswat uh, one with subswat two uh, which will come later uh, but for now we're working with uh, subswat one and these are the um, uh, the bursts that we want to consider for the two different acquisitions then uh, the next step would be to uh, apply the orbit file. So in the case of uh, this operator, we're going to be applying a precise orbit correction to the SAR data. Uh, we leave the parameters the same and uh, the same for the uh, other apply orbit file operator. And then in back geocoding, which performs the actual co-registration, uh, we select the um, uh, digital elevation model to be SRTM one second, which should be the most accurate. And we tick uh, over here to mask out the areas with no elevation and also to output the D ramp and the mod phase. Finally, in the right operator, uh, we uh, this is the, the name that we were going to give to our um, output uh, product at the intermediate stage. We see that automatically orb and stack are appended to the end of the name. And uh, this is because we have, um, 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 we're doing the apply orbit file and we're doing the back geocoding. So these will be stacked together. Uh, you might get a slightly different name um, uh, because of 
uh, depending on what the default uh, starting um, uh, name is. Um, this refers to the, the, the name of the acquisition, so either the one from one date, which was happens to be from Sentinel 1A, or from the other date, which happens to be Sentinel 1B. What's important is that you actually add the, um, it's a good uh, practice to add the name of the subswat that is being going to be output, going to be considered in this um, uh, writing of this product file. And the directory um, should be set to um, an appropriate directory um, in the location where you expect to save this, this file. So once uh, that is done, we can uh, run the, the graph. Um, we'll actually first save the graph um, as, for instance, graph one. And um, once it's been saved, uh, we can run it and wait for it to complete. So once that is done, we can uh, uh, close the graph for now and uh, have a look at the um, resulting product that has been created in the product window. And we see that um, there are um, essentially two main um, bands to, to take note of. So we have an intensity band uh, which has MST and uh, a master. Uh, which is a master band, which is from the 22nd of December 2018. And uh, the slave band is, on the other hand, from the 28th of December uh, 2018. So the next step is to repeat this process, but now for subswat 2. So we go to the graph builder and we load the graph that we were, um, uh, that we had saved previously, which is graph 1. And we don't need to change anything in the uh, read operators, but instead we go to uh, top SAR split and we change this to IW2. And we can zoom in to see that um, the burst that we have selected still overlap with the area of Mount Etna. We go to the next uh, top SAR split operator and we also change it to IW2. Here we have to just change the, chat, the tab just to remove the error. And uh, indeed, if we zoom in again, uh, we see that uh, this selected, the selected four bursts still overlap with Mount Etna. Once that is done, we can go to the uh, right operator and uh, we change the name of the target product so that it is now IW2. And in this way, we won't overwrite the previous product uh, that we have created for subswat one. So uh, once that is done, then we can um, uh, run this, this graph and then um, continue when it's done.